Gloria Starr, International Etiquette and Manners Coach, for part two of Dining with Delight. We have had our soup bowl removed, and now we're ready to begin on our salad, which is indicated in two ways. One is that you have a smaller plate with the dinner plate underneath it, and you also have a small fork and a knife as you're now being your outside pieces of cutlery. So the wait staff has actually served my plate of salad uh, coming from my left, and I'm to remain still. Now when the host indicates this portion of the meal is to begin, they will just begin, and that indicates that you, as a guest, can also begin. I do highly recommend European dining skills, and this is because it's a global world we live in, so nothing wrong with the American way. However, this would put you into an international class. You're going to pick up your cutlery, and this is the small fork. It's placed with my forefinger on the back, right near the top of the fork. And inside, it's going to be like this. And that's going to be used so it is always down. My knife, I'm going to put my forefinger at the edge, and it's going to be in here. You are going to use both items of cutlery through the entire course, and they stay in your hands with the fork in your left and the knife in your right. And this salad is in large bite-sized pieces, so I would cut it so it was a little bit smaller, and that piece would come on with my fork coming up to my mouth like this. Now the American way would be to cut, change places, and then eat. So it's a little more complicated, and the way I get men to switch to the international European way is to tell them it's so much more efficient to eat this way. Men are generally into efficiency. So it's cut, eat, cut, eat. Now if you'd like to take a break and have a sip of your water or other beverages that are displayed in front of us, the cutlery must be placed on the plate and the fork tines are now facing up, where when you're eating the fork tines are facing down. Prior to having a sip of my beverage, I would use my napkin. Not like this. Then I'm going to reach for my glass, and this largest glass that was on the outside tip of my furthest knife, which is now being used for my salad, indicates it's going to be water. Then this indicates I'm going to have a light wine and perhaps an after-dinner beverage here that would be something, perhaps maybe a sweet dessert wine. So I'm going to have a sip of my water holding the glass by the stem. If the beverage in your glass is cold, then you hold it by the stem, not by the bowl. So I'm having a sip and setting it down. Then I'm picking up my cutlery together with the fork like this and the knife like this. I'm going to keep my elbows in. They're not out here, but they're in. And you're sitting very tall. You're going to cut. Now you move over towards your plate, but never down. So move over and then bring your fork up with the piece of lettuce on it to enjoy your salad. Now, if someone is interrupting you with a conversation they wish to start and you have your mouth filled with food, you just look directly at them and smile, continue chewing, and then when you have finished that item of food, then you would then respond with an answer. When you are finished with your salad, you would put the cutlery together, meaning facing straight. Now, a trick with the knives, the sharp edge of the knife must always be facing inward because outward would be very aggressive and many people in Asia or in the Middle East would be immensely offended by the aggressiveness of your knife edge facing out. So I've indicated I am finished here and the goal would be to try to finish at about the same time as the other guests at your table. That means that if you're a very slow eater, you want to speed up a little bit, and if you're a very fast eater, slow down. And then that would indicate that I have now finished, and the wait staff would then come and remove these plates, entering my space from my right and removing it there. Now, 
I have a fancy little bell here, and I use that whenever I'm hosting a dinner event here in my home-based office, and we do that frequently. And that bell indicates to my wait staff that is dressed in the proper tuxedo look with white gloves, because white glove service really adds to the memorability of the event. And they would know that they are needed at the table. Should by chance you drop your napkin or have it slide off, you do not ever try to pick it up. You cannot bend down no matter how you try without being seen. So you just ask for another napkin. And all you would say was, may I have another napkin? Thank you. Not, oh, I've dropped my napkin. Just nice and simple, clean. Another napkin, please. Thank you. That's part two of Dining for Delight. I'm Gloria Starr, the International Etiquette and Manners Coach.